Welcome to No Place Like Home, coming to you on Pinellas County Connection TV. The sponsor of the show is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County. The HFA helps first-time home buyers in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties achieve their dream of home ownership. Working through a specialized group of lenders, the HFA offers a low rate on its 30-year fixed mortgage and helps with down payment and closing costs, too. We're proud to announce that in addition to our regular program, we have an additional $2,500 grant available to community heroes, such as full-time K-12 teachers, law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMTs, and certified first responders. Please visit our website, www.pinellascounty.org forward slash HFA. For more information about our programs or comments about the show, give us a call, 727-223-6419. I'm Carmen Lemberg, your host for today's show. Julian couldn't join us. It's my pleasure today to introduce Ms. Patricia Latshaw. Patricia serves Wright Flood as Principal Flood Coordinator and Senior Vice President of Compliance and Agency Training. Patty has over 20 years experience with the federal flood insurance program and serves on several NFIP committees. Patty's well known in the flood insurance community for her flood expertise and as an insurance agent advocate to the NFIP. And she holds the designation as an associate in national flood insurance. (laughs) That was a mouthful, but thank you so much for being here today. (laughs) I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So we have so many changes um, that have happened now, major changes in the flood maps. And so that's what I want to talk about today and help people understand this. So my main question is, Mm -hmm. am am I at risk for flooding? And how do I determine my flood risk? I think everybody's at risk for flooding. It's, you know, everybody is in a flood zone. But to find out what your specific risk is, um, I'd like to mention first Pinellas County uh, website. Uh, PinellasCounty.org forward slash flooding is probably one of the best um, websites I've seen to find out what your risk is, what your zone is. So you go on there and you click on quick, I think it's quick view, and you type in your address and your flood zone comes, the map comes up actually. And then they click on it again and it will tell them what their current risk is, flood zone, and what the new flood zone or potential flood zone is because you're going through these map changes. Things may change later, um, but it also tells you if you are in a high-risk area what your base flood elevation is, and that's where they kind of determine where the flooding is going to go to, what they anticipate. It always can go higher. It can go lower. Of course. Um, it's not always that. So it will let them know, um, you know, A zones, B zones um, are your high-risk areas. Okay. Uh, zones that start with B, C, or X, those are your moderate or what they call low-risk areas for flooding. Okay. But everybody is in a flood zone. You were, you're, I know you were talking about also being aware of the past flooding issues, and how does that play into it? Well, when FEMA does the mapping, they will look at, of course, you know, past flooding events, you know, storm surge, things like that. You know, when they do do the new maps, they're always looking at new development, you know, uh, and then including rainwater runoff, you know, things like that. It is a big one. We see that all over the country, you know, these storms coming in and, you know, we have massive flooding you know, where a storm just sits on top of a area and just keeps raining and raining and raining. It so. doesn't drain off. It I, I know, see that in the enough. news every 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 summer when the storms come. Right. Um, so, y- y- you know, you're talking about more of the site, and I'm looking to buy a property. What should I know about flooding? Okay. Well, you're looking, you should first say, if you're buying a property, the realtor. The realtor should know what the flood zone is for that property and let let you know what that is. Um, Also, when you go to buy a property and you can always talk with the um, realtor about maybe getting the what they call an elevation certificate. So if they are in a high risk area, an A or B zone, they may already have one for for rating purposes. Mm -hmm. They need that. Um, And that saves saves you money from having to go out and get a new new one there. So letting them know, you know, checking that. Also, what is a great option is um, they can transfer their 
uh, flood policy. So it's really? called they can assume, the new owner can assume the policy. So say they can't find the elevation certificate or say they're being grandfathered right now. That's a grandfathering term is uh, for continuous coverage for some of the older homes. They can assume that policy. So that helps out a lot as well. Does um, assuming a policy help with your rate? It just keeps the current rate that the the prior owner had. So instead of sometimes what can happen is if there's no flood policy or they purchase a new policy, they're maybe having to be rated at actuarial rates instead of what the grandfathering rate was. So sometimes it can help. So going to your flood agent or your insurance agent, I should say. And if you have that elevation certificate, any of that information, they can help you. Um, If you're new to the area and you're looking for an agent, you can always call Right Flood. We will give you uh, the information. Um, The number is 866-373-5663. If they're looking for an agent who writes flood, we can give them some options. Well, that would be great to know. So many of the counties interviewing area are going through all those revisions. And I know there's more information to know about those revisions. So what should we know about those revisions and how they're affecting it? I know I I was uh, talking to you before the show about how I've been trying to investigate some of this stuff. And I was getting a little confused myself Mm -hmm. when I was looking at the different maps. So maybe give us the the short view of what we can look and all that stuff. Um, FEMA has a website called floodsmart.gov. There's a lot of good information on there, especially with the map changes. There's actually, um, I brought a brochure for you. It's um, called What Property Owners Need to Know About Map Changes. So it goes more into depth so they can understand how the mapping process works and what that means for the changes they have. Um, I know, again, your your website, PinellasCounty.org, uh, flooding forward slash flooding has a lot of that information as well. And um, I'm just going to put this out there. You have an awesome floodplain manager, Lisa Foster. Um, She actually won the CRS award, which is a community rating system award. And this is an award FEMA gives out once a year. So throughout the whole country, she won that last year. Wow. Um, So she's done, and it's all based on education for property owners and getting involved in um, what community rating system is, is when a community goes above and beyond basic floodplain management guidelines. But the big, great part about it is Pinellas County is now rated as a class five in this, meaning that anybody in a special flood hazard area, they can get a a 25% discount on their flood insurance premium. So it not just helps the community, it helps, you know, the homeowner as well. Wow. That, you know, I I do not know that. And it's really (laughs) exciting to know that our community is doing that. We have, we're lucky to have such a person working for us and taking care of us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> You're very lucky. She's great. Um, oh. A couple other things is, you know, people want to know what happens if I move, you know, I I was in a low risk zone or moderate risk zone and now I'm in a high risk zone. And, you know, the good news is FEMA put together this, uh, it's called newly mapped. And it's a, re- it's a reduced premium. It's discounted. So uh, they allow somebody to be newly mapped, um, so they'll they can take care of that opportunity, you know, because they're going to be maybe concerned about going from a high risk, from a low risk to a high risk. That's exactly what I'm looking at. So that's yep. good to know. It is good to know. So, um, but the big part of that is they must purchase uh, a flood policy, an NFIP flood policy, within a year of your map change. Okay. To get to take advantage of that newly mapped. What happens if the designation on my property as it's currently rated changes with the new map? What do I do then? Right. So 
again, if it goes from a low risk to a high risk, you know, a lender's going to, if you have a federally backed mortgage, a lender's going to require flood insurance. Oh, they're going to so, know about the change. They're going to give you that little letter, do it or get force placed. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Um, and, um, and again, so that's your newly mapped where okay. you can go into that. Now, if you go from a high risk to a low risk, then you want to look at you're still susceptible to flooding. You should keep a flood policy, but you get a refund on your current policy term when the flood map changes, um, and you'll be eligible for a preferred risk policy as long as you haven't had um, prior flooding in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's this, that eligibility to that. Um, and then say if you just stay in the same flood zone, you know, your base flood elevation may change. It's, you know, they're doing the coastal mapping. They're looking at that. So we see some that don't change. Some of the base flood does change. It mm -hmm. might go up. And if it goes up, we talked about grandfathering before. You can keep that okay. lower base flood for rating as long as you have that continuous coverage. Okay. That makes you know. good sense. And then if it goes down, then you get a refund too. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as a homeowner now, I spend an awful lot on my homeowner's insurance. At least I, I feel that I do. Um, so do I really need to buy a flood insurance policy? I'm in a non-evac zone, um, 44 feet elevation, which in Florida, woo -woo, that's high. <laughs> but um, so do I really need it? I think you do. Um, you know, just from my experience and seeing people out there um, and, and being affected by a flooding event who think, you know, well, I'm in this low risk area, I'm not going to flood or my bank's not requiring it or the, my, my bank says I no longer need to uh, maintain a flood policy. Um, you know, you, you're looking at a couple inches of water in your home. You know, you can look at $25,000 replacing your floorboards, things like that. Um, do you have that money sitting in your savings account to just say, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I have that. I can fix that. I don't need Probably flood policy. Not. Right. You know, and you can get $250,000 of building coverage, 100000 of contents in that preferred risk zone for under $500 for your primary home. I mean, that's... What sort that's of what deductibles are you looking at with that? Well, deductible is uh, 1250 Well, $1,250 oh, is the standard deductible on that. That's lower than yeah. my hurricane, so... Right. And so, hurricane doesn't cover floods. So. Right. <laughs> but that goes for both building and content. So it's... $1,250 you know, each? Each. Okay. Exactly. That's still not that bad. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I know my... Parents um, lived in Colorado and got caught in the big floods several years ago. Oh. And for the first time, I mean, they'd lived in that house for 35 years and never, ever had a flood, right. ever. And the right. big floods came, and they wound up with eight inches of water in the basement, which was fully lived in basement, destroyed everything. Right. And the cost to have somebody come in, clean that and then the mold started really really fast so it had to be you know treated and all that and it was outrageous right so like i said if they would have just had a preferred policy it would have really really helped a lot would have helped you know there is limited coverage in a basement for flood insurance unfortunately in florida there's not too many basements which is good which is good and on the deductibles, you know, there are other options for a standard policy. So say if you are in a high-risk area, you're not eligible for the preferred policy. If you are currently in that high-risk area, there's limitation of coverage in enclosures as well. Oh. You know, because those are always going to be, or I shouldn't say always, most of the time going to be below the base flood. So there oh, okay. is limited coverage. But, you know, we see there's foundation elements that are covered under flood. So, you know, like in your parents' case, if they had damage to the foundation elements, they may have been covered as okay. well. That makes sense. So it's always good to talk to your insurance agent about your deductibles, what you can do. But overall, you know, the cost of a flood policy um, I know a lot of people rely on disaster assistance, and they think disaster assistance. Yeah, it's not there. No, I mean, FEMA, ha I mean, there is disaster assistance. And they do a really great job. Right. But people think, like you say, right. 
oh, I'll just talk to FEMA. FEMA will take care of everything. Yes. That's yes. just not going to happen. I had my, uh, my <laughs> friend who flooded was like all excited about getting free money from FEMA. And then the next day came in and realized it's not free money. You know, yeah. there is disaster assistance. I mean, the average uh, disaster assistant payout for Harvey, Maria, was Irma, Irma <laughs> um, was five thousand dollars, which is nothing. Which is nothing. You know, it can it can go up. The maximum um, is thirty three thousand dollars. Very few people are eligible for that amount of money. And remember, disaster assistance, especially here in Florida, you know. Um, secondary homes. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. You know, businesses, it's, it's, so it's usually they have to go out and get a, you know, a small business association loan. So it's really, it's really tough. Florida is unique. It is unique. (laughs) And and I will say, you know, FEMA does have a booklet called Summary of Coverage. Okay. And that can be found on the floodsmart.gov website as well. You know, so it kind of gives you more idea of, of what the coverages are. Because that was my next question is, is what, <laughs> what sort of things does flood insurance cover? It covers anything that is, it's your building that um, is damaged by a flood. So it's for building, it's the floodwaters is, has caused damage or the floodwaters has caused damage to your um, contents, you know, minus the deductible, that's the payout up to the policy limits. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, there is limitations in those enclosures and um, covered in your basements. Because I guess I'm thinking, you know, always this, you know, this time of year when we're in flood season, you see mm-hmm. all those service pro ads, you know, after the flood will come right. in and clean everything up. Does it help cover costs for people like that to come in? And there is some cleanup. Um, okay. Available under the flood policy, yes. Because I know with my parents, it was all under the cleanup, and that was where I mean, it was yeah, really expensive. Yeah, because so. it, it can be. What else? Is there anything else that we haven't talked about? Um, I think we covered just about everything. We covered the websites. <laughs> we covered all of that. Um, we do have um, it, something else. Is we put together a website ourselves. It's called um, RightFloodAdvice.org. Okay. And it's really geared to the consumer, so they have questions about flood insurance. You know, they should check that out Good. as well. We do a lot of um, information. You know, we we train our agents to help insurers understand a flood. You know, their risk of flooding, their options of coverages, the cost of coverages. So you know, we put this together really for the consumer to look at and try to understand more. FloodSmart is great, but also your website uh, (laughs) is very, very good. They do a a fantastic job, I have to say that. That's so nice to hear. Yes. Well, Patricia, thank you so much. We have covered some great information today. It's so exciting. And now we're going to take a short break because I want to also have a chance to talk with uh, Lisa Foster about the Pinellas County website. So thank you again and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Flooding is the number one disaster and can happen anywhere. Whether a few inches of rain fills your basement or you experience major flooding, replacing personal items, Handling the cleanup and repairing your home is time consuming and disrupts your life. Adding to an already stressful situation is worrying about the expense you will face putting your life back to normal. That's why purchasing flood insurance is so important. Most homeowners policies do not cover flood insurance and can take 30 days for a policy to go into effect. So talk to your insurance agent, review your current policy and discuss your specific requirements to ensure you have the coverage you need before a disaster strikes. No home is completely safe from flooding. Learn more at floodsmart.gov. So welcome back to No Place Like Home to our second segment. We're going to be talking to Lisa Foster, who is the floodplain administrator for Pinellas County. Thank you, Lisa, for coming. This is so wonderful to have you join us today. My pleasure. I'm excited to talk about all things flood. (laughs) (laughs) So I know you've been with the county for three years. And from everything I just heard, you have been working wonders in your three years here. 
especially with our website and all the things you've done for our community. So could you expand on that just a little bit more? Give us the website and tell us what you've done with it. Sure. It's PinellasCounty.org slash flooding. And when you go there, there's a main page with a whole lot of selections for topics. So you can basically pick whatever topic you're interested in, whether you want to go to the MAP Service Center or look at more information about flood insurance or ways you could protect your property, um, things you can do to get involved, how you could be prepared for flooding. There is there is a slew of information on there. And I encourage people to go on there and, and play around. And, and the MAP Service Center is something that we're really proud of. The departments at the county work together very closely on this, on this project. And it really is a great resource for not only our stakeholders, like our real estate professionals and insurance agents, but it's great for the residents and businesses so that they can go there and look up what their flood risks are because they may be susceptible to flooding from storm surge or maybe from urban flooding or riverine flooding. There are different types of flooding, and they can go on there and see exactly what their risk is. That is is so exciting. I know that, um, well, I've been out shopping for a house, and so I had gone on to that FloodSmart website and looked at some of the, you know, when I was looking at new houses, trying to understand it was showing the change here and what it might be. It was very, very confusing. So I was really excited to hear that right on our own website, we have this fantastic resource, and I'm ready to go home and try it now. When um, people go out there and they're looking, um, since I haven't had a chance to be out there, what um, what am I going to see? I, I punch in my address, and what's going to pop up on the map when my address comes up? So when you open up the map, there is a tab for each different risk. So you can look at the FEMA flood hazard areas. You can look at the Pinellas County Watershed Management Plan floodplains. You can look at the storm surge. There's actually a link to one of our emergency management applications, which shows you exactly how deep the water will get from different category hurricanes. And one thing that I do want to emphasize is that flood zones and evacuation zones Zones are different. They're yeah. completely different. And sometimes folks get mixed up with that. So your evacuation zones are based on storm surge and they're hurricane evacuation zones. The flood zones are a probability-based flood. So there's a certain chance that that particular flood will occur in any given year. Those are the maps that we look at for building regulations and flood insurance requirements. The only map that drives the flood insurance requirements are the FEMA maps, so oh, FEMA the maps. flood insurance rate map. So that flood insurance rate map not only shows you the risk for flooding, but it also will help insurance agents identify what the risk is, how to rate you, and if insurance is required. It also helps our building department determine how structures should be built. I did not know that either, so that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. This this is just so exciting. Um, Can you think of anything else that would be good to let our people know? I mean, even from a view of whether you're a citizen, whether you're a, a professional or a realtor, a business... Where is there anything else they need to know to help get ready? I mean, we are in hurricane season right now, so this information is very timely, and I, I want people to know about it. Sure. We are actually undergoing a map update right now. Every so often, FEMA will update the maps. Our, our last maps, which are the effective maps right now, were developed in 2003 to 2009 range. Wow. So they started a project to update the maps. Flood risk changes over time as as things change mm-hmm. over time. We, we get new development, uh, new roads. Um, we get better technology. We yep. collect better data of elevations. So they have remodeled the entire area and have given us what's called preliminary maps. And we do have a tab on the map service for preliminary maps. So folks can go on there and look at what their current risk is and what the preliminary risk is about to be. And those maps will become effective probably sometime next year. We don't have a set date for those yet. But I encourage folks to go and look up what their map change is and contact their insurance agent to make sure that they lock in the low rates while they can. That was, yeah, do it now before the change comes in. Now, when they're looking at reevaluating and changing these these maps, are they taking into account like the 100-year flood zones? Correct. 200 to 500 um, and, and see where we are kind of in a historical perspective coming forward. So, okay, now we're coming up on a 200-year time period. 
you know, we're coming up on the 500-year time period. And, and are they incorporating all of that into the map? Yes, that's part of the more updated data that they use. It's updated weather data. So they take all the more recent storms. Good. The original coastal modeling, this is actually a coastal update that they did. So the original coastal modeling was done back in the 70s. And it was improved upon later, but it hasn't had a whole revamping. So we have new bathymetry data. We have new LIDAR data. We have new weather data based on current storms. So all that information went into new and improved models as well. And I always use the example, think about your t- telephone or, or your television back in the 70s. Compared <laughs> to where we to, are now. <laughs> compared to where you are now, exactly. So we anticipate that these these preliminary maps, which will effective become effective at, at some point, will better reflect the current risk. That is so good to know. Any last minute information you'd like to throw out there? I just encourage all of our residents to find out what their risk is and make sure that they prepare accordingly, whether that's getting a flood insurance policy or raising their AC unit, whatever it might be. I encourage them to visit the website and make sure they are prepared. Oh, wow. That is so great. Thank you so much for joining us. I I really appreciate it. So that's uh, it for today's show. I'd like to thank our guests, um, Lisa Foster, the floodplain Administrator with Pinellas County, Patricia Latshaw with Wright Flood, and of course, Pinellas County Communications Department. We look forward to having you join us next month. If you missed any part of this show or you'd like to view past shows, check out our website or catch us on YouTube. I'm Carmen Lemberg. Thanks for joining us and make it a great day.